You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because you're feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Will Dog, sitting with my buddies, Kev Hug and Duggan. Surprise, surprise. Hello, everyone. And Kyle the Coach Duggan. Hi. Hello there. Well, hello. All right, folks. Well, uh, it is Friday, and we've got plenty to talk about here. Uh, We want to take a look now at some of the guys that maybe kind of stood out to us uh, at the Combine and uh, what... what, what do, do, do they have any connections to the Chargers? Are we are we actually going to try to make a go for some of these guys? What are we what are we thinking? So, um, what are what are some names of some players that have stood out to you guys? Yeah, so th- there was this the uh, Bolt beat put out a list of all the guys that we actually talked to at the combine, and nice. this is not an exhaustive list. Not everyone, uh, but the people that they could have confirmed or that admitted to it in an interview um, that we talked to um out at indy so um just some guys that i when they actually popped up on here for me it adds act some credibility you know like obviously if we took the time to interview them there's some interest there that's pretty much all you get from tommy t um is if there's interest right um which and most of the time he doesn't interview guys that he's gonna draft a lot of people are like i didn't talk to the chargers and they drafted me first round that's right. very true yeah yeah, yeah. So this could all mean nothing, um, but <laughs> but we got to talk about something here on the Charger <laughs> chat. We got to chat about gotta something. Chat. Something. It's, it's pretty much how all of the off season goes. We just right. guess we're wrong, and then we move <laughs> we on. apologize, we and then the season little, starts. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then somebody um, asks us there to was, answer questions properly. <laughs> there was three guys that kind of stood out to me as like, oh, that's that's kind of cool that we interviewed them, and they all land in different spots in the draft. Um, a first rounder that we talked to that. Hasn't we haven't talked about yet on the Charger Chat podcast? We've mm-hmm. talked a lot about tackles, corners, uh, but David Ojabo from Michigan, um, big time motor guy, pass rusher, get after him. Um, all the draft and al- analysts have said that he's uh, really fits into that three four edge rusher, like outside linebacker type, which would be which is what we need. Especially mm-hmm. we don't know what's going on with Chenna, if he's going to get a long term deal, if we're going to let him walk. It sounds like they're working towards getting him a deal. But if they're interviewing these top first round edge rush type guys, um, you you never know what that what that's signaling. I don't know if that's that's leverage with agents or what, but um at the end of the day, we have a certain amount of interviews that we're allowed to ha- t- that we're allowed to conduct. Mm. And one of those was with him. Gotcha. Um, he's a huge motor guy, um, 6'5", 250. His, his comp is like a Robert Quinn type who had a, uh, uh, had a career year this last year with the bears. Um, so just an interesting guy that I hadn't, hadn't really looked at when I watch his tape. He's just a high motor guy. Mm-hmm. He reminds me like, like, like Joey Bosa, like the guy's motor just never stops. He f- kind of seems to fit into I'm that. I'm not tired. That I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Even though he's exhausted. <laughs> oh, um, I'm tired. He kind of fits into that mold of what um, Coach Daly is looking for mm. in a defender. Um, dynamic, not just gigantic. Um, can get after the quarterback for sure, but just never stops on a play, um, which is what I saw when I watched his highlights. It just seems like like a ball is fumbled and he's right there. He's in the right spots to make make big plays. So mm-hmm. um was a, a a cool cool name to pop up on that list for sure. And what round is he projected? He sh- he should be a first round guy. Oh really? Okay. So yeah, yeah. So he's sh- he's one of the he's one of the top uh pass rushers in the draft class. So if you saw his name come up as the Chargers select David Ojabo, yeah. you'd be cool with that? Yeah, yeah, I, I Again, I it's not even something that I've done a huge amount of research. Just as my right, right. college football fandom, I love watching football, and the Big Ten is on a lot. So you see a lot of Michigan, Ohio State, those games. Um, and he was a baller. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it, it, a pass rusher in the league are top paid guys. Like I've said in previous podcasts, those those positions that are going to demand top dollar, 
That's why I want us to draft in the first round so we get a cheaper deal. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. I think, and for one of the guys, like the one of the positions I kind of just not thinking about because it's not really an issue for us at the moment. It's a depth issue, but not a starting issue is running back. And mm -hmm. and we're clearly just taking shots in the draft at running back. Yeah, and every year. Every year. And it's not quite hit. You know, we're we're hoping some of these guys would do something and and they they really haven't, you mm -hmm. know. So um there, there's some guys that kind of showed up, you know, that could be some later, later round draft picks. Um, or even some of the earlier rounds, like Brees Hall from Iowa State. He did really good at the combine. He ran really well, um, looked really good in his drills. So I'm kind of curious what, you know. Who you know, maybe we haven't interviewed some of these guys with Tommy T, but there's a good chance that they're probably going to be drafting a running back somewhere in here, trying to hit hit on a later round pick. So that, that's <laughs> kind of what I'm curious to see what they're going to do. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, the second guy on that list that we actually did conduct an interview with, uh, Trent McDuffie, cornerback out of Washington. That's another big name that's kind of been associated with the Chargers a lot. Um, you're hoping he's there in the second round, uh, but as I watch film, to me, this is again. I'm no professional at this. This is just me <laughs> watching football. To me, he reminds me a lot of an Asante Samuel Jr., just a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's closer to the six foot mark than Asante is, um, which I think he could he could come in and compete right away. But he has that fire when you watch his like highlight tape. I remember playing high school, even just high school football, when I was at um, the school here in San Diego, and I would play, and somebody make a big play, you could see. The, my teammate, they just kind of weren't into it. Like, oh, cool. You made a good play. Let's go back to the huddle. But then you see those guys that when they make a play, they get so hyped up that like they're so invested and committed and into what they're doing. That's what Trent, that's what I saw. That's just like a little thing that I saw as Trent McDuffie was playing. He has that fire in him that not everyone has. Some people in college, they're just really, really ridiculous, gifted athletes. And so they go out there and they put up numbers and they look really good and they run fast forties. But when you put on tape, it's just kind of like, yeah, that was a really good play. Uh, but the highlight ends right there because it's just boring afterwards. McDuffie like gets up and gets hyped and is so excited and fired up after every play he makes. Um, that's why I think he could be, I know we interviewed him, so probably won't be, but I think he could be a good fit onto this Derwin James, Asante Samuel hyped up defensive back group. Um, to be a real competitor. So Trent McDuffie, corner out of Washington. I, I, I don't know where these guys are going to go. Um, Draft Network had him kind of going as a second round. Um, so if we could if we could pick up a big time tackle edge rusher in the first and then a, a corner that could play right away again in the second round, I think he would be a steal down there. Sounds like Coach Daly is going to be a, a cornerback Pac-Man. He's going to try and gobble him up. <laughs> Sounds like he wants a lot of those cornerbacks. That's probably a good yeah. pick. Yeah, um, for sure. How how important is it to? I mean, you mentioned you talk about his energy. Like, is that like, is that a key factor? Like, is that really something that like matters in that aspect of the NFL? I mean, because when you've got somebody like Derwin James, it's it's having that kind of energy almost makes him seem more of like the leader, which he is. He's a team captain. Does having two guys like that? Do you? foresee like any kind of like power struggle or just like some guy trying to overhype the other guy like it's an a high off or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's really hot this year he's real hype yeah. off hype off <laughs> <laughs> no I, I it's only it's only a good thing yeah um, those are the guys you want to be teammates with and that's Part of what makes a championship team is having the right culture in your team. And that's what Staley has talked about so much this offseason is, is like, yeah, we didn't do what we wanted to do last year. But as my first year as a head coach, I was just trying to establish who we are and how we do things. Mm. Um, and I think that that was a big part of it is, is being competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and guys like that, they don't get fired up and so excited about plays if they don't care. You know, they really care about what they're doing and they love playing football. Right. And those are the guys that I want to cheer for. Like, that's who I want on the team. Mm -hmm. I don't want the ridiculous athlete that's just kind of there because he's really good at it, mm -hmm. you know? And that is some of the NFL. These guys are just ridiculous. They know they can make a lot of money doing it, so they do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want the guys that love playing football. Mm -hmm. totally. And nice. that's what it seems like McDuffie is. And he's got a sick last name. Are you kidding me? McDuffie is an awesome McDuffie? last name. Yeah. Get that'd out that'd of here. That'd look good on the back of a charger. On the back of a jersey? Blue. Yeah, yeah. That'd be sick. Okay, I'm in. Yeah, and then uh, the last guy that I saw that hadn't even 
wasn't on my radar whatsoever. Popped up that we talked to him. Don't know for sure how to pronounce his name. Um, he's a tight end out of Maryland. His name is Chigosium Alconquo. Mm-hmm. Mouthful. Nice. So nice uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, he, hey, he, it would fit with some of the other big <laughs> weird names that we've had Uchen on the chart. Uchen 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 yeah, Uchen yeah. Uchen yeah. Uchen Nane and yeah. all those other good ones. Yeah. So Ogbong Fun, also <laughs> Ogbong a weird little, <laughs> In our last episode, Tony was putting some numbers together. This Okonkwo mm-hmm. wore the number 17 early in his career mm-hmm. at Maryland. We draft 17th overall. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Hall of Famer Philip Rivers, Rivers, number 17. <laughs> Whoa. His stock also went up a little bit in the, in the combine. He ran the fastest 40 of all the tight ends at a 4.52. Oh, wow. The guy can scoot for being as big as he is. Um, I, I watched a little bit of his tape. Again, I don't have access to game film. <laughs> We're not, we don't have that. So right. I went on YouTube and watched his highlights. Um, so he was, was w- one thing that was cool, an aspect of his game that you don't normally see in tight ends. Um, Maryland ran this like almost like flex bone type thing where they have two wings and they would motion and run fly sweeps. We know what a fly sweep is. Um, and they were giving fly sweeps to this guy. They're tied in and mm. he was running, he was getting on the edge and, and, turning up field for some real positive yardage, like big touchdown type mm-hmm. runs on fly sweeps, which you don't see to tight end. That's no, not, tight end, no. th- th- they're not normally quick enough to be able to get the edge on that. So right. um, he has a little bit of a project as from what some of these draft prospects say. Um, it, it, it ad, from what I've seen in highlights, it, has, it doesn't appear to be a big time blocking guy. He's more of a, a route running pass catching type tight end. Um, the comp that was given to him was a David and Joku, which who was the guy that I really wanted us to maybe try to go go after this offseason. Absolutely. Um, I think but, they, so, he uh, got tagged, so we're not getting him. Yeah, yeah he's not going. Well, but let's get his younger, cheaper his younger, version. Cheaper <laughs> option. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He should be a day three guy, so it's not going to be an early round draft pick for him. Mm-hmm. But seeing that we talked to him, um, I wanted to look him up, and I was excited about what I saw. I think he could be a cool uh, project for us moving forward. Okay. Awesome. Well, there there you go, folks. There's a few names to keep on your radar as far as Chargers having talked to them. Like we've said, though, in the past, just because the Chargers talked to them doesn't necessarily mean... Don't mean squat. Yeah, don't mean squat. And in fact, you'd probably have a better chance looking at all the people that we didn't talk to. So (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. um, Bigger list, but... It's a bigger list, but you you might have a better chance of picking the the guy that uh, Chargers might pick. So... Um, yeah, go check it out over at, uh, bolt beat. They've got a list of all the guys that the uh, chargers talked to, and it is an extensive list. There are some, uh, interesting names on there. And those are a few of the ones that I think if we were to pick up could be, could be fun to see, you know, what else would be fun to see what <laughs> charger <laughs> chat <laughs> oh, oh, man! If oh, you wow. go to chargerchat.com, you can check out all the cool shit that we've got over there. We've got <laughs> shirts. <laughs> We've got hoodies, we've got stickers, and we've got a member section for you to chat it up with other Charger Chatteteers and ask questions like an Ask Bolt fam. So go check it out, chargerchat.com. There's a lot of cool shit over there. So um, now it's time to go on to the next segment. It's Bolt History with Mike Modlin. Let's go. Remember like it was yesterday. In comes this whirlwind, Don Coriel. So see the San Diego Chargers and see spectacular professional football at its best. Into the end zone, Charger fans are witnesses to history! What's up, Bolt Gang? Welcome back to Bolt History. I'm your Charger Chat historian, Mike Maudlin, and today we are going to be talking about one of the players whose numbers have whose number has been retired by the Chargers. As you may or may not be aware, the Chargers have a history of not retiring many, very many players' jerseys. Um, there have only been four retired in the existence of the Chargers. Uh, and this one was the second one retired, even though he played prior to the person who was first. Uh, we're talking about Lance Allworth. Number 19 uh, was retired by the Chargers in 2005. Uh, Dan Faust was retired in 1988, which technically made him the first jersey to be retired, even though Allworth played before Fouts. Uh, Lance Allworth played for 11 seasons in the AFL and the NFL from 1962 through 1972. He was elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1978. Uh, He was the first player inducted into the Hall of Fame who played most of their career in the AFL. He was also the first Charger to be drafted or to be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And he's also a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. 
One of the interesting things about Allworth is that he was drafted twice in 1962. Al Davis actually signed him um, prior to him getting drafted. He was drafted in the AFL draft in the second round. He was picked number nine uh, in the second round. But he was also, two days later, drafted in the first round of the NFL draft at pick number eight by the San Francisco 49ers. He played for the Chargers from 1962 through 1970. Uh, and then he played later with the Dallas Cowboys from 1971 and 1972. Some of his accomplishments, uh, see, well, he was a Super Bowl champion with the Dallas Cowboys in Super Bowl VI. Uh, he's a member of the NFL's 75th all-time anniversary team and a member of the NFL's 100th anniversary all-time team. He was an AFL champion in 1963 with the Chargers when they beat the Boston Patriots 51 to 10. And he was a seven-time AFL All-Star from 1963 through 1969. Six-time first-team All-Pro uh, AFL, 63 through 68. Second-team All-AFL in 1969. AFL Player of the Year in 1963. Three-time AFL Receiving Yards Leader, 1965, 66, and 68. Three-time AFL Receptions Leader in 66, 8, 68, and 69. Goodness gracious, what accomplishments this guy had. Three times AFL Receiving Touchdowns Leader from 64 through 66. Uh, he's a member of the AFL all-time team, of course, and the number 19, as we said, was retired by the Chargers, and he's also a member of the Chargers Hall of Fame. He was born in Houston, Texas in 1940, but was raised in Hog Chain, Mississippi. Uh, he played football at Brookhaven High School in Mississippi uh, before attending the University of Arkansas. Now, here's an interesting story about that. Even though he grew up in Mississippi, uh, he was offered a scholarship from the University of Mississippi but ended up marrying his high school sweetheart, Betty Jean, right before or right after graduation from high school. The University of Mississippi at the time had a policy against recruiting married players. They rescinded his scholarship uh, due to him being married, so that's why he ended up going to the University of Arkansas instead. And boy, let me tell you, was he a stud at Arkansas, but also in high school. In high school, he earned 15 letters in baseball and football. Immediately upon graduating high school, he was offered contracts by the New York Yankees and the Pittsburgh Pirates to play baseball, but he didn't want to play baseball. He wanted to go to college and run track and play football. So that's what he did at Ar Ar University of Arkansas. Arkansas tried him out at running back at first, um, but he was also used effectively as a punt returner. In his second season in, in college, he was selected as MVP of the Cotton Bowl, even though their team lost the game. Their only touchdown in the game was a 49-yard punt return by Allworth, and he was selected as MVP of the game even though his team had lost the game. That's pretty huge. Um, he also led the country in punt return yards as well. He was drafted twice in 1962, as we said, uh, but he, he went to the Chargers because he felt like Sid Gilman had something special brewing in San Diego, and boy, was he right. Clearly by the evidence by the 1963 championship, his second season with the team. And Sid Gilman even had a plan for Allworth before he even joined the team, before he even arrived. Uh, he decided to move him to wide receiver, and the rest became history, obviously. In his rookie season, he got a torn thigh muscle, which limited him to four games. But in those four games, he still had 10 catches. Three of those were for touchdowns. Um, and then, obviously, the 1963 season, the next season, was huge. Um, he improved at wide receiver every season up until 1970. Uh, he was a huge reason why the Chargers were were always in the AF, AFL playoffs, much less, I mean, they made the AFL championship game several times as well. Uh, a decline with him started in 1967, and when when Allworth's play started to decline, uh, so did the Chargers' fate. In 1967, the Chargers started a downhill descent, and they never made it higher than third place in their division after that. Uh, even though prior to that, they were just dominating the AFL. In 1969, Sig Sid Gilman retired, uh, and he was replaced by Charlie Waller. Now, Sid Gilman had retired due to poor health, and Charlie Wall Waller came in, um, not half the coach that Sid Gilman was, but Allworth kept, uh, kept performing pretty well. Um, and despite leading the league in receptions in 1968 and 1969, in 1970, his production dipped a lot. And he was traded to the Dallas Cowboys in 1971 on May, May 19th, 1971. They had come off of a 10-4, the Dallas Cowboys, that is. They had come off a 10-4 season where they had gone to the Super Bowl, but they lost to the Colts in the Super Bowl. Uh, and they thought that Allworth would be the piece that be able to get them over the top and help them win the Super Bowl, which they actually did the very next year, Super Bowl VI. 
they won the Super Bowl and Allworth got a Super Bowl championship ring. They were right. His production continued to decline after three seasons. After three seasons of declining stats, he finally retired in 1972. He just uh, couldn't take it that his, his stats were declining. He wasn't contributing as much as he was before. Uh, and so he ended up hanging him up in 1972. In 1978, he was the first Charger and the first player who had com competed in the AFL to be selected for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. In 1999... He was ranked number 31 of the top 100 players in the NFL history by the Sporting News. Obviously an incredibly talented player, and as many of you know, his nickname was Bambi. He was given that nickname by a teammate named Charlie Flowers, and Charlie described it, it the reason for the nickname, because Allworth didn't understand. <laughs> Why are you calling me Bambi after a cartoon character? And he's, Charlie said, uh, it's because of your big brown eyes and the way you move. He was known for his speed, and he used to lift his knees real high when he ran, uh, and that reminded everybody of a deer, uh, along with his big brown eyes. And so that's how he ended up with the nickname Bambi. Uh, incredible player, incredible career, and just wanted to take time to recognize Lance Allworth on Bolt History because he is one of our greatest players ever. That's it for this edition of Bolt History. I hope you really enjoyed it. And as always, remember to stay bolted. Gay love you. Bye. Those big brown eyes. I just oh. get lost in them every <laughs> <Bambi>. time. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah. i mean obviously like lance allworth we all know him by name just because his number is retired he's one of the few retired numbers so it's like you can't yeah. not know that um but what an interesting history like i mean can you imagine not being able to play for a college because you were married that's crazy <laughs> that's crazy the like 60s, what, a, what the hell <laughs> with 60s what are you doing um, what are you doing 60s yeah, what what a what a crazy career! I mean, missed out on a Hall of Fame wide receiver. Yeah, what a blown for a weird like stipulation in like yeah. the rules. That's so yeah. stupid. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And um, I love the 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 picture, the 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 eye black that he had in that one picture. Like, oh, gee, very progressive. Eye black. That was yeah. very yeah. progressive. Like, I, yeah, you wouldn't see. I, I'm used to seeing that like in you know the 90s, but like yeah, seeing it that early on, like woof. What Those powder blues were OG. Oh yeah, the so the, beautiful. The OG uniforms, absolutely. But um, but yeah, man, what a what a, what a crazy history for for a player named Bambi. <laughs> um, oh man, <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for taking a look at uh, our boy Lance Allworth. And Thanks, um, Bob. if you if you guys have any particular players or any historical stories that you want Mike to take a look at, let him know. Shoot him a message, and uh, and I guarantee you. He will do some digging. He will <laughs> he will find something. Um, all right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Charger Chat. Any final thoughts, gentlemen? Excited for next week. See, we're one clo one day closer to uh, NFL free agency and uh, rock and roll. Start to see some moving, some real and some things. Shaking. Yes, we need some real things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> something tangible. Something we yeah. can sink our teeth into. Exactly. So. All right, gang. Well, that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye.